Hello students. Welcome to the first session of Meta Inner Surrounding. Before starting this session, let me ask you one question. Why we can still smell the odor of perfume when it's quite a distance away from us? Stay with us throughout this session. Definitely by the end of this session, you will be able to answer this question on your own. Let's get started. Let's first try to understand that what exactly a matter and a material is. Look around. Everything around you is occupying some space and has some mass. That is what is matter. Matter is anything which occupies space and has mass. For example, table, chair, animals, plants, etc. Then what exactly a material is? A material is a specific kind of matter from which things are created. For example, wood, marbles, stones, etc. Now the material is of two kind. Homogeneous and heterogeneous. Now homogeneous is the kind of material which has same physical properties and same composition. And heterogeneous is the kind of material which has different physical properties and different composition. Let's get into more details. Depending upon the physical nature and the chemical nature, matter is classified into two categories. Depending upon the physical nature, we have solid, liquid and gas. Depending upon the chemical nature, we have elements, compound and mixtures. Now let's study the properties of the physical state of matter. The first property is that with the particles, matter is made up of particles. To understand that, let's take an example. We have a beaker which has 100 ml of water. We have added sugar in it. What we will observe is that the level of the water won't change. This is only possible if the particles of sugar comes and sits between the space in between the water particles. This proves that matter is made up of particles. The second property is that, that these particles are extremely small in size. To prove that, let's take another example. Let's take a beaker which has 100 ml of water, add potassium permanganate or ink of any color, red or blue. Take 10 ml of this solution, take it in another beaker which has 100 ml of water. Repeat this process 3-4 times. You will notice that the intensity of the color in this beaker is not the same. Rather, it's decreasing with the dilution. This is only possi possible if the particles of either ink or potassium permanganate are extremely small in size that they are present even in the so diluted solution in the last beaker. Hence, this proves that the particles of matter are extremely small in size. Now, let's get into the characteristics of these particles. As we have discussed earlier, that these particles have space between them. That is the first property. The second property is that these particles are continuously moving. Now, if some particle or a substance is moving, it has some kinetic energy. Let me explain what kinetic energy is. When any substance is moving, it possesses energy. That energy is kinetic energy. If that particle is moving, it will have speed or velocity. When it is multiplied with its mass and 0.5, it gives you kinetic energy. Now these particles, we are saying that they are continuously moving. So they have kinetic energy. And this kinetic energy increases with the increase of temperature. Let's study how. Let's take two beakers in which we have added hot water and the another we have cold water. We have added ink either of red or blue color 
in this we will notice that in the hot water the diffusion of red ink or the intermixing of the red ink is faster than in the cold water why obviously it means that the particles of ink in the hot water are moving with the higher speed and so they have higher kinetic energy when it's hot water which proves that the kinetic energy is higher when the temperature is higher the intermixing of the particles of the ink in the particles of hot water is called diffusion so diffusion also is increasing with the increase of temperature now the third property of the particles is that that they attract each other they have some force of attraction between them which is called cohesion now if i will try to break this pen i am applying some energy on it it means i am applying energy to break its its crystals into particles it means this proves that these particles have some force of attraction between them now let's get back to the question which i have asked you at the beginning of this session that why we can still smell the odor of perfume when it's quite a distance away from us yes you're right the answer is diffusion with this we have come to the end of this session in the next session we're going to study the properties of solid liquid and gases thank you second session of matter in a surrounding in this session we are going to cover properties of solid properties of liquid and properties of gases let's start with the property of solid solids have definite mass shape and volume they are very rigid and so incompressible they cannot be compressed this is because of the very small interparticle distance between them they have very high density that is density is mass upon volume when the force is applied on the solids it's not possible to change their shape at the maximum they can be broken they have very strong intermolecular forces of attraction these are the properties of solid now let's try to explain this sentence why a rubber band or a stretch band is called solid but it's changing its shape when you're stretching it So let me tell you when we are stretching it definitely it's changing its shape but when we are releasing that force it's re it's regaining its shape again so it means there is no permanent change in the shape of that substance that is why it is called solid the same applies to a sponge when we compress it it changes its shape but when we release that force it regains its shape again it means there is no change in the shape overall that's why it is also called solid let's move on to the properties of liquid liquids have definite mass volume but no definite shape they take the shape of the container they are incompressible but not rigid their density is high but lower than solids they have 
weaker interparticle forces than solid. Liquids exhibit diffusion whereas solid doesn't. Let me explain why solid doesn't have, doesn't show diffusion. Because in solids, the particles are so tightly packed that they do not have any space to translate into each other and move. If the movement is not possible, it means diffusion is not possible. Whereas in liquid, there is high interparticle spaces because of which diffusion is possible. Now let's try to explain that why water is liquid at room temperature. The forces of attraction are very less at the room temperature, but the kinetic energy and the interparticle distance between them are high. So the water particles can exchange their position and move freely. That is why water is liquid at room temperature. Let's take another example. Why an iron almira is solid at room temperature? The intermolecular forces of attraction are very high, whereas the interparticle spaces between them and the kinetic energy is very low, because of which they have definite volume and definite shape and the particles can't move. That is why it is solid at room temperature. Let's discuss about the diffusion in liquid. First is diffusion of liquid in liquid. So let's take an example. There are two beakers filled with water. In one we have added a drop of ink and in another a drop of honey. You will notice that the diffusion of ink is faster as compared to the diffusion of honey. Why? Because honey is a dense liquid. The interparticle forces of attraction of honey is higher than the particle attraction in water. So that is why honey was diffusing very slowly. Now next is diffusion of solid in liquid. For that, we have already discussed it earlier, but let's discuss it again. There are two beakers in what in one we have hot water in another we have cold water let's add a drop of ink in this you will notice again that the diffusion of ink in the hot water is higher as compared to in the cold water we have discussed this that this is because kinetic energy increases with the increase of temperature. Now let's discuss the third diffusion of gases in liquid. Now for that to understand, let's take a beaker again. Let's heat it at a very low flame. After some time, you will notice that there are tiny bubbles coming out of it. These are the bubbles of oxygen and carbon dioxide. It means that at some point before this boiling, the oxygen and carbon dioxide diffused and dissolved in water. This is one of the reasons that oxygen and carbon dioxide, because diffuse into water, Aquatic animals, fishes, etc. survive by producing their food from it. Now, let's go into the properties of gases. Gases has definite mass, but no definite volume and shape. They are highly compressible. 
Why? Because of very large interparticle distance between them, they are highly compressible. For example, compressed natural gas in the cylinders, in vehicles, LPG in the cylinders, which we use in kitchens. Now, gases also exert pressure on the walls of the container in which they are stored. Now, pressure is equals to force upon area. Because of the very high kinetic energy, these particles exert forces on the walls of the container. Divided by the area on which they are applying force, we can calculate the pressure. So that is why these gases exert pressure on the walls of the container in which they are stored. They have very low densities as compared to solid and liquid. The particles of gases travel in all the directions. Now let's look at the difference between the properties of liquids and gases. Both of them are fluid, but liquid travels from higher to lower level Whereas, as we just said, that gases travel in all the directions. Liquids are incompressible. Where gases are highly compressible. Liquids have definite surface that means if the liquid is kept open in a container the particles of liquid are not going to escape anywhere whereas in gases they do not have any definite surface So they have to be stored in a container so that they do not escape. Now we will study. With this we have come to the end of this session and in the next session we are going to study about the changes in the states of matter, evaporation and latent heat. Thank you.